Hey everyone, thanks for joining Senate Majority today. It's President's Day, day 35 of our legislative session. Um, before we take your questions, uh, and of course I have Senator Meyer and Senator Giesel with me this morning. Um, I'd like to talk about some of the issues uh, before the state today. And during Florida Day, we'll be introducing a standalone statutory spending cap bill sponsored by the Senate Finance Committee. Um, a spending cap's been a uh, top priority of the Senate majority. We passed one a year ago as part of the POMV bill um, that would access a sustainable portion of the permanent fund each year to help pay for government. And we simply have to acknowledge the fact that the earnings reserve um, will be used this year. We support that stringent rules are used um, around the use of those funds. There could be absolutely no willy-nilly, year-to-year, grab-as-we-go use. That risks the fund's long-term health and viability, and it puts the dividend at the highest possible risk. So we felt that um, as we access new funding sources to help pay for government, we owe it to Alaskans to keep our spending under control. A spending limit would do just that, and Senator Meyer's going to cover that in detail in just a moment. We've had some demands in the, over the last couple of years, and um, the other body has had demands as well. And what we realize is that uh, as we attach those demands and must-haves to key legislation that we're sort of not getting anywhere. So we've isolated those issues. That's why we're dropping a separate spending cap bill. Um, and, uh, and we're going to separate those issues. So the other body had... Uh, the requirement for oil tax increases, income tax increases, and attach them to the POMV funding. We had a spending limit. The reason I dropped um, a bill the other day that you've all seen, and that was Senate Bill 183, was to isolate it. So that's what we're doing with the spending cap. We're going to have a separate spending cap bill, let it stand on its own mem um, merits. We're going to have a separate uh, POMV bill so that it stands on its own merits as well. The, the key um, to using um, a POMV is so important that I believe we need to come together on that issue alone. And that is a rules-based approach for the use of earnings reserve funds. That's, that's quite clear that we're not going to stress the fund, that we're going to continue to have the availability to pay out maximum dividends, that we're going to be able to manage that in perpetuity. Um, and and the, the argument about how much goes to dividends, how much goes to governments, what happens with budget cuts will be a separate discussion. So I'm now going to turn it over to Senator Meyer to uh, talk about our spending cap in principle. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, the Senate State Affairs passed out um, a uh, constitutional amendment uh, dealing with the um, spending cap, uh, which, of course, will we'll go in – uh, we'll move through the process uh, uh, with the finance statutory um, uh, uh, budget limit or budget cap. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons um, for, for doing a spending spending cap, budget cap, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, there's been several polls done that show that this is what people want. Uh, I know there was a poll done by the uh, 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 Dittman last year that showed almost 66 percent of the voters support um, a spending cap. Uh, and I know certainly the, the polls that I've done, and I think you've done as well, and, and uh, Senator Giesel, um, our districts uh, also want to put a, uh, a spending cap in place. So uh, this is something that's needed. Um, uh, obviously, a constitutional amendment is, is a higher hurdle than, than statutory, so I think it's good that we have both of them going through, through, the, through the process. Um, so. Another means, too, uh, of, of controlling our, our spending is um, uh, a bill that uh, I introduced, Senate Bill 130, which would require voters to approve uh, any new broad-based taxes, whether it be a income tax or sales tax. Uh, again, this is, uh, this is done in, um, well, one state that comes to mind in particular is Colorado. It's been very successful. Colorado's got a uh, as you know, a booming economy, and the state's doing very well, and they're they're doing this by holding down the taxes that they tax the their uh, their their citizens. So, um, also there is a constitutional amendment um, 
on uh, for new taxes as well. And that was actually, uh, that one's in, that bill is in Labor and Commerce, and we've requested a hearing on that as well. So those are the two bills that, uh, um, that, uh, that, we, that we're pushing through the, through the process to help control our spending and to have um, the public more uh, input on, on how we spend our money. I mean, uh, as you know, there's a lot of initiatives out there asking for uh, people to um, vote on our per diem and our wages. Um, so certainly I think that it's, it's, it's fair that we ask uh, the general public their opinion before we implement any broad-based taxes. Okay, so let's uh, let's bring it back to the subject before us today, and that is separating our issues. One of them being the POMV, so the percent of market value. It's funny because I talked to a guy the other day that's been against it the whole time. I said, I said, let me have five minutes of your time. He said, there's going to be use of the earnings reserve, right? We know there's going to be use of the earnings reserve. Do you want a plan that could jeopardize, because the only reason you're against it is you worry about future dividends. Do you want a plan that can jeopardize dividends because it's an unstructured draw, or do you want us to know what that's going to look like? And it was funny, because in a five-minute conversation, suddenly I had a POMV fan. People need to understand what a percent of market value draw is to ensure the sustainability of that fund. And of course, as we've said at the Senate majority, we simply want to stay Although we wanted hundreds and millions of cuts, we have to work with another body and the administration. And if we isolate those issues, it's still important to us that we beat inflation, that we come in under two and a quarter percent, that we get the cuts that we can get. So that's the reason for a spending cap. Over time, it will reduce that increase of government. It'll, increase, it'll reduce the growth of government to a manageable amount. And then when you see our models, you see that we start balancing around 22 or 23 if all things remain somewhat consistent. I wanted to hand off to Senator Giesel now. Um, what kinds of resources issues do you have this week that you'd like to talk about? Well, speaking of things on the agenda this coming week, uh, the Senate Resources Committee is going to hear the governor's bill, Senate Bill 176. So this deals with the idea of bonding <coughs> to pay off the oil tax credits that the state owes. So the Senate is really focused on reducing risk to the state. And the veto of these tax credits has created a risk factor for the state. Uh, the the um, credit, excuse me, the um, the Rating agencies have credit committees that look at the reliability of different sectors. And, and they don't just loan uh, to oil and gas. They also do telecommunications, utilities, other things like that. And looking at the state's veto of the payment of those tax credits has blackened our name. So I appreciate Commissioner Fisher uh, and I understand Devin Mitchell has also been working with him to come up with a creative way to pay off these tax credits, and that's through this bonding bill that's being <coughs> proposed. So the Senate uh, Resource Committee is going to take a look at this. Um, you know, we need to bring revenue back to the state. We're in the middle of a recession. And the paying off of these tax credits to the small companies that have made significant discoveries can make a big difference in this recession. Um, I'm hearing that down on the Kenai Peninsula, more and more folks are still being laid off. You know, we've had a lot of layoffs so far, up, almost up to 10,000 people, 10,000 jobs being lost, and the Kenai is still losing folks. We've got Blue Crest down there in Fury, two small companies that have discoveries of gas as well as oil down there, and they can't pay off the loans they took out because they were counting on those tax credits. So, so I appreciate uh, the, the uh, innovative idea that's being proposed. We're going to take a deep dive into it in Senate Resources, take a look at it, and, and see how it looks. Thank you, Senator Giesel. Senator Meyer, uh, let's open it up for questions. Matt? Good morning. Matt Hurst from the Anchorage Daily News. Um, Curious to hear your guys' perspective on um, a lot of discussion about the POMV concept, what goes along with that. Um, there have been, I think in both chambers, definitely the Senate, there's been um, a, like a, 
uh, constitutional amendment to put the dividend uh, in the Constitution. And curious why that has not been embraced by the Senate majority, um, you know, sort of regardless of whether you set a dividend amount and a percentage or whether you just sort of enshrine the concept in the Constitution, it seems like that could be a way if you sort of were to guarantee that there were going to also be a dividend to build more public support for the POMV concept. So why has that idea not gotten traction with you guys? Well, I, I think I can answer that relatively simply. We're struggling with how we're going to get a POMV across the finish line without, it, we haven't been able to isolate the discussion of dividend size and what that looks like in the future. So the first priority is getting through where we can fund a reduced, you know, a government that's a reduced size, as we've done since 2014. I think getting those issues isolated um, certainly increases the probability that we can have that next discussion. And you're going to see a bidding war if, if you don't settle um, what a POMV is going to look like and isolate it and then start the discussion about what dividends look like, if you pay out a full dividend or if there's some reduction, we feel that you have to isolate those discussions or they become all entangled in policy that makes it um, impossible to have the two bodies come together on a solution. Couldn't you also just sort of isolate, you know, without putting a number on the dividend, if you sort of isolate a POMV and a dividend of some sort, don't you think that could bring like the Wielakowskis or the Dunleavies of the world along with you without necessarily promising them anything specific? Well, that's an interesting concept. Uh, we've seen um, <clears throat> we've seen strange bedfellows when it comes to PFD um, amounts and the discussion, right? People that agree on almost nothing else. So we know Alaskans are focused on it, which in my view is as important as um, being printed within the Constitution. The fact is Alaskans demand a, a dividend, they demand a healthy dividend, and we're going to work for the healthiest that we can possibly deliver. Senator Giesel? You know, Nat, a lot of Alaskans have lost the source of that dividend, and that's royalties from our, the resource development. Mm -hmm. um, largely, of course, coming from oil, but also coming from mining. We've got a couple big mines that are moving forward into development, but my interest is in getting more development of those resources and more jobs so that people aren't dependent on what is actually being looked at as a guaranteed minimum wage, the PFD. We want people to have jobs, to be productive. And right now, we have a lot of risk factors we're dealing with, one of which is a salmon initiative. This could shut down all development in our state. This is a, this is a huge risk that we've got to deal with, and citizens need to understand the implications of that. So there's a lot of uh, information that we want to get to citizens so they understand, first of all, where that dividend comes from, resource development, the royalties from oil gas mining, and that we have initi an initiative out there that's probably written by uh, lower 48 uh, special interest groups that does not do Alaska any good. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Brooks. 